Tuesday, September 13, 2022. You get home and you see this. Edge Runners captured our hearts. It gave us another perspective of the streets of Night City, one filled with camaraderie, betrayal, and love. More importantly, Edge Runners showcased that the house always wins, that even if you are able to escape, a part of you dies in Night City. This message was hammered home and clearly received by cyberpunk fans. And I do really believe that the anime played a huge role in saving this franchise. The show was instrumental in captivating a fresh group of tombs and tombas ready to experience the city for themselves. For those of us gonk brains who got the game since day one, we know how tough the road has been. We have seen this game go through a ringer. Remember when the PlayStation Store removed the game for a time? Even the Microsoft Store had a warning before buying the game. This thing was in shambles, and here we are now, four years later, celebrating its magnificent turnaround. I know my intro and thumbnails are suggesting that it was purely the anime that saved the game, but I think in reality, there were a lot of factors that played a role. One of them is CDPR's dedication to actually making this game good. To be fair, the pressure was on, because I'm quite sure if they didn't fix this game, their brand was going to get flatlined. Regardless, they did it. The game feels fantastic. It feels like a game they should be proud of. And the year Edge Runners was released, CDPR also launched Patch 1.5. And it was Patch 1.5 that made the game decent, like actually worth playing. It was fun just running around in the streets of Night City. But I digress. I don't know about you, Tombs, but the tone for me was set early. The atmosphere, the intensity we get in the first episode got me hooked. We got a cyber psycho wreaking havoc in city center. Then Max Hack comes in flexing their superior tech. And these scenes, a man getting mugged in broad daylight, dudes watching some inappropriate BDs, again in broad daylight. Finally, trauma team flying into action. Everything happened. The noise and the smell of Night City was oozing off your TV. Oh, and let's not forget the tragedy that befalls the Martinez family. Imagine seeing your mom injured, and she isn't gone yet with Trauma Team coming in with a chance to save her. But you know what? Good old capitalism is there. Then you are forced to take her to a sketchy walk-in surgery clinic, only to be told that you cannot see her because your package does not allow for it. In the game, and while reading the source books, we have come to know how things go down. We have seen Trauma Team assist in the first gig with Sandra Dorsett. We got a demo of Max Tax skill while Jackie was taking us home. But while watching the anime, we feel just how cruel things are. Like seriously, watching Trauma Team walk away from David's plea made me go on a Trauma Team killing spree. The anime did a great job using what we have seen and then taking it a step further. I remember when David was on the Night City cart, I felt a sigh of relief. Like at least I get to see someone use the Night City subway. And I'm sure it eased the bitterness some of us gamers had about the fact that the subway was not actually operational yet. But you know what? That's all water under the bridge. Later, we are introduced to more of the cast. Lucy, of course, the love interest. Main, the boss man. Dorio, the muscle head. Becca, although not David's cup of tea. She was most viewers' love interest. Then, mysterious Kiwi. Even Pilar, who seemed like a typical gonk, was redeemed by how Rebecca reacted when he was flatlined. Pocket Harley had to be held down by Maine. And post time skip, she upgrades her arms most notably to be able to handle the weapons she was not able to in the past when raging against that same cyber psycho. In my headcanon, she did this for her brother. This just tells us how much he meant to her. Despite him being a clown, she loved him. He did enough to make her honor his death. Then of course, we have the betrayal. At first, I'm sure everyone hated Kiwi, but let's face it, she saw the end of the crew and chose to cash in early. She understood that David was essentially pulling a main, and it didn't help that the runner she was mentoring decided to ghost everyone. She understood the end was near and decided to pave her own path. Looking at it from this perspective, her decisions seem justified. I already see some backlash to this perspective, but not everyone wants to make it to the top and fight the system like David and Maine. I skipped over so many things in the anime because there are too many things to discuss. But you edge runners get what I'm saying. And on that note, let me know some of your favorite moments from the edge runners anime. Leave it in the comment section down below. The show also helped me understand the idea that Night City always wins. I never felt this in any of my gameplays. 
every time I finished a new ending. It just felt like, okay, Night City sucks. But with the show and the updates, I finally felt this. I finally understood the saying, the house always wins. And it was as simple as seeing Night City in another perspective. I saw it in a more hopeful and excited rookie edge runner kind of way, willing to do what it takes to make it to the top. But at what cost? So many lives lost, so many lives affected by the decisions we make in the game. Judy, Pan Am, Victor, Rogue, Johnny. I actually started to care about how their stories ended. This was something I originally would not care about. Weird, but I finally started to acknowledge the role-playing aspect of an RPG. Chooms, I think I'm starting to grow as a gamer. And I have edge runners to thank for that. And it did not stop there. Things for the game only got better. While the anime was announced, CDPR was committed to working on improving the game itself. As mentioned, patch 1.5 made the game feel like a ready AAA game that everyone should be playing, with patch 1.6 coming to tie in the anime with a storyline in the game. This patch made David's story feel connected. Players getting the opportunity to retrieve his jacket and to watch the same BD David watches in the first episode. It makes the experience, again, just real and connected. Top this off with being able to use Becca's shoddy guts, and you might find yourself going straight into Arasaka Tower to get some revenge. With all of the changes that was poured into the game, I couldn't help but feel grateful that I stuck it out with Cyberpunk. And with that came the release of Phantom Liberty, completing this game's comeback. Overall timing of major patches and the release of the anime truly helped Cyberpunk 2077. I've been mentioning it throughout the video, but old chooms were rewarded for their patience and new edge runners were brought in to enjoy this revamped experience. What more can I say? Other than enjoy it chooms, this game is one for the ages. Now it's your turn. If you were a day one player such as myself, what brought you back or did you ever leave? If you are new to Cyberpunk, what do you enjoy? What is that thing for you in Night City? Let me know in the comment section down below and let's get talking. Make sure that I'm smashing that like and sub button for more Cyberpunk content. I'll see you Edge Runners in the next one. Bye.